Here's how your TikTok live viewers can trigger any chat command in your Minecraft Java game. Here is an example of a rose which has spawned a creeper. And here's an example of a follow which has spawned a TNT which has just exploded. You want to start by purchasing Minecraft Java. I'll put it in the description if you don't have it yet. So on this website, the regular Minecraft one is fine. And then we need Java 21, which is called Amazon Coretto 21. I'll put the download link for that in the description. When you're installing Amazon Coretto, you can just keep pressing next and accept all of the defaults. Next up, we need a local paper MC server, which will eventually look like this. But first, here is a new and super easy to use multi-streaming tool from today's sponsor, Riverside. Now you might have heard of Riverside before, as it is the easiest way to record, edit, and share professional grade videos and podcasts. But they now support multi streaming too. So if I click into my settings and head to live stream, you can see that it is super simple to use for multi streaming. As you can see, I can link any major streaming platform and I could even link Kick using this custom RTMP option. And of course, I can link TikTok using my stream key. I could even just start the OBS virtual camera and head back into Riverside. And if I change my camera to the OBS virtual camera, here it is, and then just close out the settings here, I've now got my entire OBS inside Riverside. Riverside's multi-streaming supports high quality 1080p streaming, including lower third integrations to easily brand your live stream. And there's even an omni chat for Twitch, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can also upload your own content into Riverside and for example, repurpose it into short form content. We do this using the editor built into Riverside, which is not only fast and easy to use, it can also be enhanced with AI features. So I've uploaded my recent YouTube shorts streaming deep dive and I've done it twice here just to show you the before and after. And if I click into it, you can see we've got multiple AI options available, starting with generating show notes, and look at all the stuff it's generated for me. This includes chapters, which I could use as timestamps, as well as some suggested titles. For example, setting up a professional live stream on YouTube Shorts. I might even use that title and other stuff like summary, keywords and takeaways too. I can also use this full episode section. This would let me add captions or I can just use it as a traditional video editor. The most interesting one for me though is Magic Clips. This creates bite-sized and easily shareable clips using AI. And as you can see for me, it's created six different clips and they're all complete with suggested titles. And I can also just click into them to make any changes I want inside the video editor. So thank you Riverside for sponsoring today's video. There is a link in the description along with an exclusive discount. Now that we've bought Minecraft and installed Amazon Coretto Java 21, we're ready to create our local PaperMC server. And for this, we need an empty folder. I'm gonna make one on my desktop, but you could make one anywhere. So I'll make a new folder. I've called mine TikTok Live Minecraft server. The name doesn't really matter and let's just open it. We need to add a few files into this, starting with the easiest one. I'm just gonna right click, choose new, and we're gonna make a text file. The name of the text file is eula.txt, lowercase, all one word. I'll just press enter to save that file name. I'm now gonna open this new text file and into it, again, all one word, lowercase, eula equals true and control S or file save to save it and then just close it. This file basically accepts the license agreement. Next up, we need a file that launches our server. This is called a run.bat or a start.bat. The name doesn't really matter. So we're gonna head to flags.sh, which is in the description to create this. And there's only two changes required on this page. I'm gonna rename server.jar to paper.jar. And then of course, I'm gonna click on Windows because we're not on Linux or Mac. And then I'm gonna press this green download button. And of course I need to find where my Minecraft server folder is. So for me, it was on the desktop and it is this TikTok live Minecraft server. Again, you could leave it on start.bat. I'm gonna rename mine to run.bat, run.bat, not at, be careful what you type. And then I'll press save. So now if I look inside my server, I've got two files. We need a third one though. 
And that third one's gonna be our actual Minecraft server, which is our paper file. So I'm starting in the Minecraft Java launcher. Make sure you click on Minecraft Java on the left and just check what release you're on. For me, I'm on 1.21. And then head to the Paper MC website. I'll put this page in the description. You can see on the left, your version of Paper needs to match your version of Minecraft. So if you have an older version of Minecraft, then just click on the one you want and you want to download the most recent one. Anyway, I'm on 1.21. These are experimental builds because the version has just changed. It's saying download at your own risk, but I've always found I've never had any issues. Anyway, I'll press the download button. You just want the most recent one. And once again, I need to find my TikTok Live Minecraft server. I'm actually already in it. And the name of this one does matter. So this one needs to just be named Paper. So I've renamed it to Paper and I'll press Save. And again, if I go back to my list of files, I've got a eula.txt, run.bat, and a paper.jar now. Make sure these are all carefully named. If they're not, then your server might not run. Next up, I'm gonna right click new and create a folder with the name of plugins, all one word, lowercase, and head to the server tap GitHub page. I'll put it in the description, click on two releases, and we want the most recent release of server tap. So I'll click on server tap 0.61, and then I'll scroll down a little bit until I've found the jar file. And I'll just click on this jar file. And again, it's very important where we save this. This time we're going inside our plugins folder to save it. What ServerTap's gonna do is gonna connect our Minecraft server with Tickfinity. And this one is not required, but I highly recommend it anyway. This is the delayed TNT plugin for timecode. And once again, I'm gonna go to the latest release and I'm gonna download the jar file. And once again, it's gonna go into the plugins folder. So once again, if we go back to our folder, the TikTok Live Minecraft server folder, we've now got three files, double click into the plugins folder with two plugins inside. So if I head back to the one with the run.bat in it, it's now time to start the server. So every single time you wanna launch your server, you double click run.bat. You might get a warning from Windows the first time you do it. If you do, just hit run anyway. So as you can see, the warnings popped up for me, so I'm gonna run anyway. And then you'll get this black console window. It will take a while, but eventually you'll get a page saying timings reset. If you see any yellow or red warnings, you can just safely ignore them. So I've got the timings reset here. So there's one thing we need to type into the terminal just as a one-off command. I'm gonna click back onto my Minecraft launcher and I can see in the bottom right here, this is my username, wg underscore mojo, case sensitive. If I go into my terminal and just type op space wg underscore mojo, I've now given myself server operator inside the game. This is just gonna let us type any Minecraft commands manually into the game, but usually Tickfinity is gonna do it for us. So let's minimize this, make sure you don't close it. And now let's just launch Minecraft Java. And we'll do this to make sure our server is working. So click onto multiplayer. You can either click on add server and type the IP in or click on direct connection. And the IP is 127.0.0.1, which is known as the local host IP. Let's now click on join server. And with any luck, we now should be joined into a clean new server. And just clicking into the console, you can see it says that I've joined the game. Now, very common question here is how do we get creative mode? So slash game mode creative at this point, if you want to switch to creative, of course, if you want to switch back slash game mode survival. And as I said earlier, keep this run.bat console minimized in the background. If you close it, it's going to stop the server connection. Now, speaking of closing the server, if you want to do it safely, first just disconnect and then to safely shut down the server, just type stop followed by enter and it will safely shut it down and close the console. You can of course just press the X button as well. And if you ever wanna fully reset your world, then what you do is just delete these folders named world, world nether and world the end. And once you reopen the run.bat, it will remake those folders. So it's now time to connect our TikTok Live with Minecraft and we do that using Tickfinity. I'll put it in the description. I highly recommend the desktop app, which is what I put there. Start on the setup page. If you haven't already, click the login button and type your TikTok Live username. You don't need to press connect. That only works when you're live. We can set this up without being live. Anyway, click on TikTok login on the left-hand side and click login to TikTok. And then a little bit further up, click on Minecraft connection. Type in your username. Once again, you could find that in the launcher. And then further down, click on test connection. Of course, you need to be connected to your server with the run.bat open for this to work. So I'll press test connection and you can see connection successfully established. This means that Tickfinity will now successfully work without Minecraft Java. And it is now time to think about the type of chat commands that we want. 
As I said earlier, you can trigger literally any Minecraft Java chat command based on events like follows, subs, gifts, likes, shares, etc. So if it helps, just jot down all the different commands that you want. For example, at the start, I mentioned spawning a creeper with a rose and spawning TNT with a follow. And if it's also helpful, I've got in the description my chat GPT template, and you can use this to generate any commands that you want. So instead of spawning a creeper, let's spawn five creepers. You just press enter and chat GPT will give you the correct command. And it is important to note sometimes that a lot of these commands, they need the execute at player name run before the command. So the common command is just slash summon creeper, for example. If that isn't working, then try execute at player name run before the command. So let's look at that. Let's look at how to add the commands inside Tickfinity. We do that on the actions and events page. You start by creating a new action, and this is where you put the Minecraft command. So if we look at my creeper one, I've just named the action spawn creeper, and we find execute Minecraft command. I recommend you expand the editor. And as you can see, I've done execute at wg underscore mojo, run, summon creeper, and then this one just spawns it two blocks in front of me. And I can even press run to test it inside the game. So there's the creeper and it's now exploded because I'm in survival mode. And when you're happy with your command, press apply. You might also want to add alerts in. So show alert user and text. So we're spawning a rose here. So by default, it always shows the profile picture and the username. So I could type something like sent brackets gift name and spawned a creeper and it would say on the screen Harry sent a rose and spawned a creeper. I can of course choose different colors, customize this the way I want using the global overlay settings. And then let's scroll down the page a little bit. You could do any of these other actions as well. For example, you could get the text to speech to read out loud what's happening. Let's set a display duration. This is just the text that shows on the screen. So I'll put that for three seconds. I'm going to repeat this one with gift combo. So for example, two roses spawned two creepers and I'll press save. And what I need to do is I need to add screen one here and I recommend increasing the queue length. I need to add this to Live Studio or OBS or Streamlabs. Same technique for all of them really. What you do is you add it as a browser or link source. So inside Live Studio, add source, find link click on add, control V to paste it into the box, custom resolution if you want and add source. If I click on the link on the left, you might want to rename it. I'll call mine Tickfinity screen one just to prevent any confusion with multiple link sources. This is where the alert would go so I could perfectly center it. If I go back to Tickfinity, first what we want to do is create a new event to link it with the rows. So I'll press edit. Of course, you would just press create new event, but I've already made mine. So it's sending a specific gift. The gift we choose, of course, is whatever you want. I chose the rose. Now, underneath trigger all of these actions, we're spawning a creeper with a rose. It could randomly pick multiple actions, so you could create multiple actions, and you could go like a creeper or a zombie if you want more variation. Anyway, we'll keep it simple. We'll press save. And now we can test it either by pressing the play icon here, or better yet, use the event simulator to simulate a rose. So simulate gift, you can see it's on the screen here. I've actually added it twice because I had it used as a previous test. So let's try that again, just to get it looking better. So simulate gift, you can see it's on the screen now as the alert. And of course, I might have even died in game. Yeah, I've died in the game because I'm on survival mode and it just spawned two creepers. And effectively, I just repeated that for the TNT. So if you recall earlier, we used timecodes delayed TNT, and that just simplifies the spawning of TNT. So literally slash TNT, as simple as that, if you just want one TNT. There's more parameters, so let's look at those. So we can see they're on his GitHub page, so you can go slash TNT amount, which just spawns an amount of TNT, but you can make it even further detailed by slash TNT amount delay fuse. So for example, slash TNT five, one and three, that would spawn five TNT with a one second delay between each TNT spawning and each TNT would have a three second fuse. So if we type that here, five, one, three. So in Tickfinity here, if I press run to test it and then go back to my game, you can see there's TNTs spawning every second and I've got to run away from them to stay alive. Sometimes they'll spawn a little bit into the ground, but you can see that works just fine. So that's why we installed the delayed TNT plugin. It's just more easy to spawn TNT. And as I said earlier, don't forget you can use ChatGPT. I've put my ChatGPT template in the description. It can give you any Minecraft Java command that exists. 
You can also just ask it to give you further ideas for commands if you can't think of any yourself. Effectively, your imagination is the limit here. You can also add further plugins into your Minecraft Java Tickfinity, including one developed by myself and Timecode. I'll put that video on screen now. And you can also even get your chat and alerts inside the game. I'll put that video on screen as well.